What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button. You're also going to get more episodes of The Great Debaters, more of these first and 15th, and some of the other commentaries that we bring to you on Unique Access. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And while you're down there, please join us as a member. There's three different tiers. You can join any one of them would be greatly appreciated. And we've also gotten some feedback on two other things. One, some people have subscribed to Unique Access and say that mysteriously they were unsubscribed. So please, while you're down looking around or while you're watching this video, please make sure you are in fact subscribed. And then secondly, if you are subscribed, other people have been telling us they're, we're not popping up in their feeds as much anymore. So please, while you're here, watching this video, make sure right afterwards, you could either hit that play all button to start playing all our videos or definitely just watch one or two other unique access videos right away so that we get and stay in your feed because we're cranking out content all the time and we'll make sure that you guys are watching it. Now today on the 1st and 15th, what I wanna talk about, of course, we just had the 50th birthday of hip hop, although that date is disputed by many, it's accepted by many more. So we're gonna ride with that. But with the 50th anniversary, the 50th birthday of hip hop, I was thinking about a lot of things and people were saying, oh, what are you gonna to do to celebrate? What did you do to celebrate? You know, I'll put up posts and talk to friends and stuff. Actually uh, went to the studio with Juicy J for a variety of reasons, but that was my celebration. But as I thought about it, the most important and the most significant thing is since hip hop's older than me, I grew up through this whole experience, through this whole culture, and was able to, once I fell in love with it when I was 10 years old, to really embrace it and to try to catch up to speed with as much as I could at the time, and then learn as much as I could that was happening at the time. And one way, of course, I was doing this by getting the music as a young kid. My friend Tom Early gave me my first mixtape, but I had a lot of great material on it. I was in elementary school. I was listening to Dana Day Nightmares, You Talk Too Much uh, by Run DMC, The Show by Dougie Fresh and Get Fresh Crew featuring MC Ricky D, UTFO, Roxanne Roxanne, LL Cool J, I Need a Beat. Many, many, many songs that I fell in love with, Curtis Blow, Basketball, etc. But the thing is, this only whet my appetite and this is what made me fell in love with rap. So as I fast forward and as I'm growing up, as I'm getting into high school and stuff, I was like, man, what else can I do? I'm buying the music, I'm going to the record store, I'm getting posters, I'm doing as much as I can. And that's when I realized I was old enough to finally start going to shows. Thankfully, my dad, uh, when I was still underage, my dad drove me and a couple of my friends to see the Fear of a Black Planet tour in 1990. And we got to see Digital Underground, Chill Rob G, Heavy D and the Boys, Digital Underground, and Public Enemy as the headliner, Fear of a Black Planet, and Kid and Play as well. That was my first show, still one of the most amazing, if not the most amazing concert I've ever been to. And it just whet my appetite for more and more concerts. And, you know, the following year, I got to go to Bowie State University and see Brand Nubian, Leaders of the New School, uh, at a concert that was hosted by Chris Thomas, the mayor of Rap City. I did interviews with him. Check out one of the links right there if you haven't already. And that really was an amazing moment for me because it was right in my neighborhood, relatively speaking, not too far away in Bowie, Maryland. But then also I got to see Stinky Dink, who was a local artist, signed to Luke Records. He had the One Track Mind song for those that are from the Maryland area and DC DMV that remember that song, One Man, $100 and a One Track Mind, which they played a lot on the radio. Uh, locally because we supported a lot of our artists and especially the go-go scene that was thriving that I was also fortunate to grow up in and around as it was exploding and developing but right away I was just like man going to this concert everybody treated me with uh, respect and I just had a great time and it was so much fun and I was just in the crowd as a kid enjoying myself as you know a teenager just starting to drive and just starting to be able to go out and do these shows and every step everything that i did up to that point was just how can i be more involved in rap how can i do more how can i do all this stuff so as rap was growing and getting more popular thankfully 
I was figuring out new and different and uh, increasingly more significant ways to get involved. And then when I got to college, I started writing. I went to Xavier University and started writing for the Xavier Newswire, the school newspaper. And as I hustled with that and did all these different things, I then ended up getting a job at Rap Pages. Shout out to Alan Gordon. He's the one that hired me. I got my first full-time job at a magazine, Rap Pages. So I moved to Los Angeles from Maryland. That was his only requirement with the job that I had to move to LA to be in the office every day, which of course, going from Maryland to LA was a blessing. Big culture shock is very different, but LA is my favorite place and I love it here. And I'm very glad that Alan opened that door and gave me that opportunity at a time when I was trying to get a job and work for a rap publication or a newspaper or somewhere where I'd be able to continue to freelance work that I've been doing since my freshman year of college at Xavier University. So one of the many things I'm very proud of that we did at Rap Pages is, is that we helped make the covers very distinctive. Here's a link to one of the ones we did with Method Man, where we had him um, kind of Clark Kent style turning into the Super Woo Man, I guess you would say. But that's part of the creativity and part of the thing that we wanted to do at Rap Pages and that Alan and the other people that worked there with us, we really tried to be creative, write these great stories and put the artists in the best light possible while, you know, explaining and detailing who they were to the reader, which is something that I've always tried to do in my own writing. And what I do here on my interviews with Unique Access Entertainment is really give you that unique access that I talk about, which is really learning about the artists, their, how they think, how and why they do what they do artistically, and then how that all translates into the music they make, the beats they choose, the producers they work with, and then similarly with the producers, how and why do they do what they do artistically, and how that was shaped and formed and has evolved over the years. So all those things, you know, Rap Pages really afforded me a huge opportunity and a great platform to go from a freelance writer to then working at a magazine, which was a dream come true. Because as a kid that grew up in Maryland, reading The Source, grew up reading The Washington Post, The Baltimore Sun, The Capitol, and Annapolis, but then all the different rap magazines that were coming out, rap pages among them, of course, that was a dream come true and like a validation in a lot of ways that, man, what I'm doing and I'm getting noticed and I'm getting this job. And that was amazing. And as things progressed, all the artists that I started talking to and spending more time with and having these conversations with started paying attention to me even more and more to where I have some of these great conversations with people like Ice Cube. And there's a quote that he had said to me, uh, you know, when we were in Austin, Texas one time as, as we were talking. And I one of the main reasons that I loved rap was the lyrics and the stories and the insight that all these amazing men and women had in their lyrics, in their minds, and what they were sharing with us, the listener. And with Ice Cube, particular in this instance, I was able to be sitting with him, having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him in Austin, Texas. And that was just like, man, when I was a kid and I'd be listening to NWA and CIA and hearing some of the Stereo Crew stuff, but all these things, it was just blowing me away that as somebody that had loved, cherished, and respected so much of what Ice Cube was doing for then to be able to be sitting down with him as part of my job and having these one-on-one -on -one conversations with him and being in a different state to do it, no less, was so amazing. And, you know, that's Ice Cube. I've had, thankfully, hundreds, if not thousands of these types of interactions. And it's gotten to the point where, you know, someone like Ice-T is promoting his book and I get to interview him for it and he shouts me out. Hey, what's up? This is Ice-T. I want you to check out my new book, Split Decision, and me and my partner, Spike, on Unique Access with the one and only Soren Baker. Do not play yourself. Watch this. And right there, it's just blowing me away because Ice-T didn't have to say that. He didn't need to do that. And yes, of course, I'm interviewing him and supporting his book, Split Decision, that he did with his longtime friend, Spike. But that's just the type of thing that happens more and more and never ceases to amaze me because Ice-T is somebody I've been listening to for years, you know, six in the mornings when he broke through, but I'd heard some of his material earlier 
And it was just blowing me away at fast forward to where now Ice-T knows me and I've spent a lot of time with him over the years. I've talked to him so many times and he's always dropping game as you guys see on all the interviews and different things that he does. But to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one time, whether that's over the phone, over Zoom or in person, it's just, it's priceless. And that's the type of thing that I grew up aspiring to do. And the thing is, as my career's progressed, I've been able to write a lot of books. And, you know, it all started with this one, man. Back in the day, the history of rap and hip hop. This is my first book. And it's basically a, was designed to be a history book for middle school or textbook for middle school students. And one of the amazing things about that too was Ice Cube. You know, I gave him a copy when it was first coming out and he said his son loved it, O'Shea Jr., who now of course is a very famous actor. But he said that O'Shea Jr. loved it and really learned a lot and was very appreciative of me writing it. And right there, Ice Cube's endorsing it, his son's endorsing it. And I got a lot of opportunities and a lot of shine and a lot of people really enjoyed that book. Fast forward several years and my next major, major book was, you guys have seen me talk about it and promote it a lot here on Unique Access Entertainment, but the history of gangster rap. And that's a beautiful thing because you know, I've interviewed Schooly D's my favorite artist. There's the link I did recently with him. And, you know, to be able to write a book, started off with Schooly D, but then also Ice T, Ice Cube, and all these other artists that I grew up idolizing, worshiping, following, studying, admiring, all these different things to be able to write a book and celebrate them and show that this is not mindless music. This is music with a purpose that meant a lot to me and it still does and you know to have schoolie d mc ren ice t the doc uh dr dre gave me a quote <laughs> you know i mean it's just amazing and you know even looking on the back there's an ice t quote we got the doc giving me a shout out we got exhibit we got big les these are all people that i've gotten to know over the years and befriend and they're shouting me out and supporting me on my book and that to me is such a blessing and I'm so grateful and fortunate that, you know, these are all these full circle moments as my good friend Dana Dane would say. And then when we get to my next major book, man, The Gucci Man Guide to Greatness. Now this is important too, because this shows the growth and the evolution of rap, you know, gangster rap and in general, West Coast music was largely shunned and frowned upon, but that ended up being the most prominent and dominant culture thanks to the work that Ice-T, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and many, many others, of course, put down. But the South faced similar problems and similar doors being shut. And Gucci Mane, of course, is one of the biggest artists in rap history, but he was another artist that gr grinded so hard and put out so much music and I would argue, and most likely is the most prolific artist in rap history with the most material out, cranking out great material. And he had a hit autobiography. And then I was fortunate enough to write uh, The Gucci Man Guide to Greatness. And this, you know, is just amazing. And as I'm going and as I'm promoting the history of gangster rap, I was even fortunate enough to have a book signing at Delicious Vinyl. And Delicious Vinyl, of course, was the amazing label that put out you know, huge songs and albums by Tone Loke, by Young MC, by Master Ace, by The Far Side. There's a link with uh, one of my Far Side interviews, but, you know, they hosted Bill Duke and me for a book signing. And, you know, there's the flyer. And then the amazing thing is, there I am now, that flyer got turned into a poster and is on the wall of fame and delicious vinyl. So, you know, to be able to have these books and then to be, uh, championed and celebrated by the people that I looked up to and I aspired to be like really is a cause of celebration because that shows how hip hop has affected me but then all these different things and all these different people that are trendsetters that are leaders that I'm able to do stuff with them and create and collaborate with them and these are all people that I think highly of and have admired and that continues to today with the next book, which is about to come out uh, September 5th, Chronicles of the Juice Man, Juicy J. This book is amazing. 
And uh, I'm very excited. Juicy J and I are going to be doing a lot of great stuff uh, to promote it. He's going to be doing so many interviews. And it's like, I'll never forget Juicy J. Uh, I've been knowing these guys, 36 Mafia, since first talked to him in 97 and then went to Memphis in 1998, thanks to Grace Heck. Shout out to Grace if you're out there watching. But she wanted me to do their bio first, but then uh, do an article for Rap Pages. So shout out to Alan Gordon for letting that happen. And from there, I started developing my relationship with all the members. Of course, we've lost uh, way too many of them, most recently Gangsta Boo, but of course, Lord Infamous and Koopsta as well. So that was you know, terrible. And after having known, especially Gangsta Boo the most and spent a lot of time with her, over the years, just talking and doing stuff and hanging out. It's just very difficult that on the one hand, you can build these great relationships, but then as is with life, you know, people die and people, you know, you lose touch with people and different things. But the beauty of it is Juicy and I's relationship remains strong. And the latest manifestation of that is Chronicles of the Juice Man. And like he does on his albums, he's got a, a quote from the Bible on there. This book is amazing. There's a lot of uh, incredible stuff in there. So please pick up a copy of that and the history of gangster rap in particular to keep those things going and growing. And this is all a celebration of my experiences and my life, just a very small sliver of it as I've grown in hip hop culture and as things continue with my career, all of which I'm internally grateful for because as a 10 year old kid first falling in love with rap to be able to do all these things, share some of these things I just did with you, and then be able to document them and celebrate them and have others document them and celebrate them as, as well is uh, amazingly humbling. It's amazingly exciting. And it just shows that something I fell in love with, I've been, I've tried to do as much as I can to promote, to celebrate and champion hip hop. And it's given me so much in return that I'm ultimately blessed and I get to do what I love for a living. And I've been really, really fortunate. You know, you got to work hard, you got to get lucky and you got to persevere during the down times because there's plenty of those with anything in life. But I've, I've uh, been fortunate to get so much from hip hop culture. And that's why I want to talk about it here on the 1st and 15th as we celebrate hip hop's 50 year anniversary and birthday. So as that continues throughout the rest of 2023, just want to say thank you. Please hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think of what I was saying and all the different things that are going on in hip hop now and for the uh, last 50 years. What are one or two of your favorite memories or favorite things that I mentioned that excited you or that gave you some bit of nostalgia? Please subscribe, like this video, share it. Be sure if you think you've subscribed, you're really subscribed. You can join us. And also make sure to watch one or two other Unique Access Entertainment videos once this one wraps so that we can keep this going because we want to get Unique Access Entertainment to the number one spot to keep bringing you guys these interviews, these insights, and all these different things. So I'm Soren Baker. Thank you so much. You can follow me on all social media at Soren Baker. Definitely check out my books and I appreciate your support on Unique Access Entertainment as always. I'll catch you next time on the 1st and 15th.